Tonight, playoff implications abound as the Murphy Panthers try to break a two-game losing streak and get back focused on returning to the playoffs. But across the field, Davidson knows tonight is a must-win game for them to even have a chance at making the playoffs. Can the Panthers rebound and get the win, or will the Warriors prevail and keep their playoff hopes alive? We're about to find out next with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Al Wheaton along with Corey LeBounty. Down on the sidelines, we have Kimberly Dunn. Corey, it's a ball game where playoff possibilities are at stake. Without question, Al, tonight's matchup, 7A Region 1, you're jockeying for playoff position, and both of these teams call Land People Stadium home. So, again, no advantage there, no true home field advantage, really. Yeah. But when you look at that situation, Al, again, all teams, they don't care if they're first, second, third, or fourth in the region. As long as they have an opportunity to get into the playoffs, right. that's exactly where these teams want to be at the end of the night. You're right about that. Let's take it down to the field, check in with Kimberly Dunn, her first report, and I think she has on some weather coverage gear, Corey. I do. I am presenting our Future Ones weather forecast in my awesome Future Ones rain jacket that I'm actually getting use of this season. I remembered to bring it um, because we are having a little bit of rain right now. Right now it shows that there was a 50% chance of scattered thunderstorms, which we are seeing right now. It's just a little bit of a drizzle, just enough to kind of get the field wet, which may we may see later in the game cause a little bit of a problem as far as the slippery wet turf but the temperature out here feels wonderful it is 78 degrees right now and it's just going to continue continue to drop throughout the night as well as the rain going away and just having mostly cloudy skies so it's a good night a cool night for some football Corey, the temperatures do feel great. It is finally fall football. Of being able to run the ball and sustain positive plays, and they have to tackle together. They have to be pouncing Panthers tonight. They have to make sure they get the Davidson Warriors ball carrier to the ground and do it together as a team. You look at the Davidson Warriors on the other side of the checklist, they have to limit the Panthers' big plays. And what do I mean by big plays? Plays over 20-plus yards. Okay. That's a point of emphasis for Coach Cauley this week, whereas Davidson Warriors, they want to control the line of scrimmage because Coach Cauley, we know that he has a quick and elusive offensive line. If they're able to put a hat on hat, they will have productive plays on first down, and they need to protect the pigskin. They don't want to have any turnovers tonight, Al. Right. And if they do, they're going to see if they can negate points off turnovers because to me that's going to be the difference in the game, points off turnovers. All right, appreciate that. That's a look at Corey's checklist. Let's get up the starting lineups for these teams tonight. Both of them looking for a big region win. We talked about it. It is Class 7 a Region 1 big boy football. So Murphy is the home team. We'll take a look at their offense being led by junior quarterback Alex Howell, who's thrown for more than 1,000 yards on the season under the direction of offensive coordinator Justin Thomas. The Panthers are definitely airing it out. Howell has eight touchdowns and seven interceptions as a 52% passer. In the backfield, leading rusher Theris Wheeler is out injured, and returning from injury will be senior Breland Manley, but the Panthers like to get down the field through the air. So keep your eyes out for receivers number 18, Adrian Milton, and number two, Tanaka Scott. Both average more than 12 yards a catch. The O-line will have Miles Boyd at left tackle moving over from right guard. The offense averages 250 yards across the front for Davidson, anchored by senior defensive end and sack leader Ole Miss commit Seth Johnson. The Warriors run a 3-4. From his dime back position, Demetrius Johnson leads the team in tackles and is helped by outside linebacker senior Kusim Mayers. Roaming over the field will be strong safety Rashad Kaiser, who is second in total tackles on the team. And the Warriors have 13 takeaways on defense and average 251 pounds across the front line. For the Davidson offense, at the helm tonight is sophomore quarterback Micah Brown, who has taken over for senior Jaden Jordan, who is out injured. Brown was 11 for 11 last week against MGM. He's thrown three touchdowns with one interception. He's a 70% passer. In the backfield would be running backs Jonathan Whitfield, DeAdrian Portlock, and Jalen Nash. Nash averages 7.4 yards a rush in the air. Look for Brown to get the ball out to receivers Gavin Hinn, Jason Burpo, and Denarius Brown. The Warriors O-line is all upperclassmen, but what they lack in size is made up in speed. They only average 208 yards on that line. For the Murphy defense, the Panthers play a 4-3 with middle linebacker Karan Marion 
lead the team in tackles, and right behind him is more heat with defensive end Jamari Butler, who has 11 and a half sacks on the year. The secondary is all juniors, except for sophomore Deshaun Brooks, who gets the start at cornerback tonight. The Panthers have nine takeaways on defense, and they average 250 pounds across that defensive line. So, Corey, almost like an evenly matched ball game we have tonight. Yeah, I agree with you. Again, I mean, these are two evenly matched teams. You look at their overall records. Davidson coming in at two and four. Murphy coming in at three and three. You mentioned at the top of the broadcast that it is a must win right. for both of these teams trying to make that playoff push. I think the boost of energy that I look forward to seeing tonight out of the Murphy Panthers is the return of Breland Petey Manley, right. number 27 for the Murphy Panthers. He has been injured some of the season, and him coming back healthy, last week he did return. But I think that's going to be a big factor, a big bruising back that I think can definitely add addition to the Murphy Panther offense. All right, we'll be back with the kickoff. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Don't move. <laughs> in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. We welcome you back to legendary Lad People Stadium for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Al Wheaton for the bounty down on the sidelines, Kimberly Dunn. And at the stadium right now, you can see the Murphy Panthers charging on to the field, trying to break a two-game losing streak. And, Corey, the importance of this game is highly, highly important for both of them. You talked about the records, but most importantly, Davidson already has four region losses, and we know it is tough to get into the playoff if you have maybe sometimes three or four losses with the competitiveness we have here on the Gulf Coast. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it's a situation to where, you know, in week zero going in, anytime you jump into region play, you know how essential it is not to look past an opponent. We saw these Murphy Panthers a couple of weeks ago play the MGM Vikings. Right. They jumped up to a 16 to zero lead, and then we saw them lose focus, and the Vikings were able to cut that lead to two late in the fourth quarter as well. Uh, twice in the game they were able to cut that lead. So I know Coach Rico is really focusing in on his team finishing and not getting caught looking at the scoreboard. Murphy's going to be receiving the kickoff. Heading back there for them is Deshaun Brooks and Javante Carter. And handling those kicking duties for Davidson will be number 39, Jonah DeLonge. DeLonge is a freshman, as a matter of fact, and is a uh, play soccer core and his dad is uh, the soccer coach over at Davidson so he's got some good experience with this leg here. It's always a bonus when you can get those type of athletes who are dual sport athletes who can kick the ball extremely well get them on your roster. Joe Montano the That's former right. Davidson kicker was at Davidson forever a four-year kicker for the Davidson Warriors soccer program as well but this young man definitely has a leg on him we had a chance to see him in the warm-ups and here we go. Kick is off. taken by Brooks and the ball comes out before I believe he is down as the officials are pointing to the uh, ground. Yeah, so it'll be first and 10 for Murphy here coming up. Momentum had stopped already and you're doing a good job for raking, trying to pry the ball away and you like that instinct to in the defense, but in that situation, again, momentum had already stopped, therefore we didn't have a fumble. Junior quarterback Alex Howell leading his Panthers onto the field. Talked about it in the open. Young man has thrown for over 1,000 yards so far this season and lined up in the backfield right there. He's been out most of the year, but you talked about him. Breland, Petey Manley back in the ball game. He'll get the start tonight at running back, and they hand it right to Manley as he cuts toward the inside, picks up a couple yards. It'll be second and short for the Panthers. You Ended on the play by Corian Westry, the 5'10", 150-pound junior from his cornerback position, but not before he gets positive yardage 
six yard gain on the play for the Murphy Panthers. Ball sitting at the uh, Murphy 41 yard line. Looks like the uh, raindrops have lightened up a bit. Definitely partly cloudy as we took the bump shot away to our break uh, for the moon there. But it feels great here at Last Stadium. We talked about it, fall is definitely in the air. Going back to Manley again, doing a little stutter step. Picks up maybe a half a yard. It'll be third and short here for the Panthers. Good stop on the play by the Davidson Warriors. And anytime you're able to try to get them at the line of scrimmage and stop the yards after contact, that's very important. Nice stop by Mayers on the play. All right, Corey, third and short. You got Manley back here. Your offense coordinator, Justin Thomas. What do you think the call is going to be here? I don't want to continue to run the rock. I mean, you can roll Alex Howell out of the pocket, but I want to go ahead and see what Manley has in his legs tonight. Third time is not the charm for the Panthers as Manley is stopped. It'll be fourth down. That ball looks like it's going to be placed about the 40-yard line, and on comes the punting squad for the Panthers. Handling the punting duties is also wide receiver Tanaka Scott. A couple weeks ago, he ran a fake for 90 yards against Theodore and scored. So always be on the lookout for something surprising, and shifty from the Murphy Panthers. Gavin Hinn deep for the Warriors. He's a speedster. If he catches it cleanly, he goes north and south extremely quick. You're right, Hinn, one of the leading receivers for the Warriors. Does not take the fair catch. Tries to move with it, and he is immediately wrapped up at about the 25-yard line. So three and out for the Panthers after a good first game from Braylon Manley. Run, run, run is what uh, Coach Rico Jackson Coach Rico Jackson called for. So now we're going to look at the uh, – Handing off that ball to Deandre and Portlock on the run. We're going to be calling up a platoon of backs for Davidson tonight. Portlock, Nash, and Whitfield may get the rock running. I mean, you have Nash with 64 carries on the season. Portlock just got his 63rd carry on the season. So anytime you're able to keep fresh bodies in and out, that's always a positive and a plus for the Warriors. And that's a first down for Davidson as they go back to Portlock, and he is just weaving his way through the line. Corey's in green grass all the way into Murphy Panther territory down, wow, to the 22-yard line. Big run from DeAdre and Portlock. Wayne Houston, the 5'9", 264-pound senior, made a touchdown-saving tackle. But look how quick the Warriors are back at the line of scrimmage. I love this tempo early right. by Coach Colley and his offense. Quick tempo and two big runs, and the Warriors on the move. Stoppage from the officials. We have a flag on the play. Prior to the snap, illegal procedure on the offense. It's a five yard penalty, first down. So that'll push the Warriors back about five yards. Sean Kelly leading his crew tonight. Scott Seeley, Carlos Fortune, Royce Robertson, Butch Bracken, and Kevin Duhon on the call tonight. It's a situation to where the Warriors hurried to the line of scrimmage, but got caught for the flag. Now it kind of changes the offensive coordinator, John Williams, play call. Back to Portlot again, kind of slips on the field turf. We've had some uh, slight showers early in the uh, game here so far. And now what you saw early is a great early three or four run calls to where they were able to bust it open big on that third run by the Davidson Warriors. And then all of a sudden on first down, when you put it in reverse, it totally changes the rhythm and the offense, uh, and it changes the play calling for John Williams as well. Second and long here for Davidson. As you just alluded to, Corey, going backwards a bit. They go back once again to Portlock. That, no, I'm sorry, that one not Portlock. That's Jalen Nash, and he's met at the line by the Panthers. Jabrian Nettles, the defensive lineman at 6'2", 293. He's a junior, folks. Has offers from Tulane, South Alabama, and UAB. He gets off his block very quickly and makes an outstanding tackle for another negative play for the Panthers. Looks like about third and 17 as the Warriors are looking over to the sideline, checking in with offensive coordinator John Williams on the call. Brown goes across the top and 
overthrows his receiver incomplete, so it'll push Davidson to fourth down. I believe they'll probably go for this one, Cora. I like the fact that they took their shot right there. I they mean, did. You, you, you really have to in that situation, and you were just hoping that he would not turn the ball over and throw that interception. He did not throw the interception, and because of it, like you said, you're in four-down territory. Trying to connect with Arthur Brown, but just outdistance him a bit with the pass. So apparently the Panthers have called a timeout here, of course. So while we have a break, let's take a look at our impact players for this ball game who will be having an impact in this uh, region matchup. Jamari Butler, I mean, this is a young man, 6'5", 217 pounds senior in his first year playing football. Already has offers from Maryland, Tennessee, Kentucky, Nebraska, Kansas. Comes in, has 11 and a half sacks. And we mentioned the quarterback, Alex Howell. We saw him a couple weeks against MGM have a very effective game. Right. He's the trigger caller and the signal caller. But a lot of defensive impact players on the field for the Murphy Panthers, and they're led by defensive coordinator Tellis Stone. Impact players for the Davidson Warriors, Cedric Johnson. He's a senior defensive end. The young man is committed to Ole Miss. He has 26 solo tackles, 10 sacks on the season. He comes from his left defensive end position. His older brother is Cephas Johnson, who's right. currently the starting quarterback right. here for the South Alabama Jaguars. Also, Micah Brown, we mentioned him being 11 for 11 one week ago. Here it is on fourth down. It's going to be all on Mr. Brown to make a good decision for the Davidson Warriors. Empty back set for the Warriors after that timeout from Murphy. Three receivers to the bottom of the screen as they're looking to air this one out. And Brown unleashes, and he is unleashed upon by the Panthers coming in there to break that up. So uh, it'll be ball over and down. So maybe a good timeout right there for uh, Coach Rico Jackson and the Panthers. Let's take it down to the sideline. I think Kimberly Dunn has an update for us. Hey guys, sorry, we're here with Principal Toomey. He was the principal at Murphy High School. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about the school and what's going on. How are you doing tonight? Doing great. How about yourself? Doing good. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the signature academies that your school has to offer? Sure. Well, mainly we have IB and early college through the University of Alabama. We're the only school in Alabama that has University of Alabama professors who actually teach on our campus and blended. So, And it's free. Mm -hmm. Our kids, we have a grant. So... We have 40 kids a year that get to get 30 credits of, of college before they leave us. That's awesome. So how do you feel that that helps better prepare your students for their future? Well, I mean, obviously, if they can leave us almost a sophomore, they can still get freshman scholarships wherever they go. But within a quarter, they're a sophomore, and they're just ahead of everybody that's there. Awesome. So I know there's a lot of exciting things that continually go on at Murphy. So can you tell us a little bit about what's going on? One of the greatest things we have is our arts program. They are phenomenal. I don't know if you've seen it, but they've been going into classrooms and kind of flash mobbing people with songs, and it has been amazing. We're going to Broadway with them in March, so it's going to be nice. That's awesome. Well, I am so glad that you were excited about what's going on at Murphy. We're excited, and I hope they wish all the best tonight in your football game. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. So, Corey, ball over on downs. But before Murphy could take a snap, Coach Rico Jackson uses another timeout. Here it is. Offensive coordinator Justin Thomas takes his Panthers to the line of scrimmage, averaging 14.7 points per game. We'll see what they're all about here on this offensive possession right on the 30-yard line. Trent Craig in the backfield. He takes the handoff. Gets a couple, maybe about four yards. It'll be second down and six for the Panthers. Trent Craig, the 5'9", 165-pound senior on the run. It's a positive play for the Panthers on first down. Again, this being their second offensive series, they tried to run the football earlier with Breland Manley. Now they come in on this second situation offensively with Trent Craig. A little bit of diversity here pretty soon. You can look for the play-action pass to come into effect as well. Hand off once again to Craig. He's got some room down here by the numbers. Picks the first down up across the midfield stripe and still going into Warriors territory. Finally stopped 
at about the 36-yard line. Big run from Trent Bridge. You get into that second level of the Davidson Warrior defense. Daniel Thompson, the six-foot, 168-pound senior, makes the stop, but it's an outstanding cutback run by Trent Craig as he was running toward the boundaries and then cut back into the middle of the field, picks up that huge first down for the Panthers offense. Great downfield vision right there by Craig. First and 10 ball at the 36. Howell hasn't attempted a pass yet tonight, Corey. Murphy continues to run. Craig once again with a run about six yards on that one. It'll be second and short for Murphy. Mayers, the 5'10", 208-pound uh, senior with the stop on the play. But again, positive yardage being established. You can see offensive coordinator Justin Thomas, they were pass heavy through the first six games of the season. Right. But now in this game, the game plan has changed to where they're becoming run heavy. Craig comes out of the ball game and back in is Breland Manley. Give the ball to Manley, and he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of about two yards. Great tackle by the dime linebacker, Demetrius Johnson, the six foot, 189 pound junior, makes his 25th solo tackle on the season, Al. And here with five minutes remaining in the first quarter, one thing that we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast, no heat timeouts. So it makes the flow of the game go much faster. You are correct, you are correct on that. Third and about eight here for the Panthers. As we are under five minutes in the first quarter, Al Whedon, Corley Bounty on the sidelines, Kimberly Dunn. Looks like the weather's clearing up a bit. Don't see any sprinkles or rain showers right now. Still partly cloudy in the area. Howell decides to keep that one, and that goes nowhere but backwards. A big loss for the Panthers. Looks like this drive may be coming to an end and stalling right here at about the 42-yard uh, line. Right defensive end, Nolan Asbury, the 6'1", 172-pound junior, comes up and makes a big stop on the play. Has two sacks on the season, but you look at the down and distance situation to where now you're going to be down to fourth down and close to 16 yards to go for the Panthers. Going to bring out Scott to punt the football. Gavin Hinn sitting at his own 10-yard line waiting to receive this punt. Scott averages about 26 yards a punt, and that one comes out pretty decent for the uh, Panthers as they, as they down it. Looks like the official's going to see it about the 11-yard line. Got to thank our folks over there at Firehouse Subs for taking care of the crew tonight. Always glad for what they do for us. Special thanks to Jim and Susie Sherman at the Greelight Road location. So at Firehouse Subs, when you enjoy more subs, you save more lives. A portion of subs purchased will go to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation. So thanks to Firehouse Subs. Also, Future Ones, we're sporting their gear tonight. If you're looking for some gear, you can get team apparel and equipment from baseball to wrestling and all sports in between. Wear the future, wear Future Ones. First and 10 for Davidson at their own 11-yard line. Brown's going to keep it. He's got some room on the outside at the top there, outside the numbers. Enough of the first down and some more as he gets them out of the hole, Corey. One of the things that you have to see from the 5'7", 140-pound sophomore is him to control the football. Made a good decision right there. Decide First to 10 for Davidson. A handoff to Whitfield. He's here on the bottom of the screen. Below the numbers, flag comes in as he is running the ball as he crosses the midfield stripe. Let's see what that call is going to be. Tackle made by Javante Carter from his safety position, 6'1", 168-pound junior. And you look at the strong run. Look at the end of it. Whether a hand to the face in this situation, that's what you want to see. It's got to be some type of block to the back because no hands to the face. So it had to be thrown right at the lineman who was trying to push on downfield. Play and blocking in back on the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. 
just toward the end of the run, Corey, you could kind of see faintly on the replay, slight push with the block in the back there. You hate that for mm. the Davidson Warriors yep. because you had an outstanding run. They broke the containment of this Murphy Panther defense, and it didn't happen before the first down was established. So they're going to mark the ball at where it was, and it's a situation now to where with 3-14 remaining here in the first quarter, Davidson still has had a couple of opportunities running the football on this drive and being successful doing it. First to 10 on the 37. Little end around for Gavin Hinn, and that is going nowhere as the Panthers collide upon him to wrap him up behind the line of scrimmage. Good defensive pursuit by the Murphy Panthers. Deshaun Brooks from his cornerback position, the 5'9", 155-pound junior, comes up and makes the stop on the play. It's a negative yard, so it'll be second down and 12 yards to go now for the Davidson Warriors. Three receivers to the top for Brown. And he's just going to keep it straight up the middle. But that is not happening as a Nettles bounces him to the ground, Corey. It's going to be third and long. Brown takes a snap, hands it off to Nash. I thought maybe a delay of game was going to happen. I thought the play clock had expired. But I was incorrect, Corey, so it's fourth down but I don't see the play clocks here at Ladd functioning. They are down on the field. They are keeping the play clock down on the field. Last night they had a little bit of problem with that, so it's a situation where they rectify that error by keeping it on the field. Back to receive this punt for Murphy. Javante Carter is going to let that one go by him, and Davis is going to down it at about the 15-yard line. So play clock down on the field malfunctioning. The play clock is being kept by the officials, so no delay of game on that delay of game on that previous play for Davidson. So it'll be first and 10 for Murphy, Corey, backed up at their own 15-yard line. Now we saw a couple of weeks ago that the Murphy offense had a lot of success on the seam routes. Right. But it seems that Davidson is not playing the same type of defense MGM play. It looks like they're playing two safeties high. And in that situation, the seam routes would not be open. That's why I think Alex Howell has to have a lot of success running outside of the pocket and running some bootleg action. But Tanaka Scott has has to get some type of touch here as this is the Panthers' third possession on offense. Manley in the backfield with Howell. And Howell's going to keep it straight up the middle. He's got some room, but he is wrapped up by the Warriors and brought down after about a two or three yard game. Nice stop on the play by Charles Caver, the 5'7", 142 pound senior from his linebacker position makes the stop but not before the Murphy Panthers are able to gain three yards on the quarterback keeper. We're under one minute here in the first quarter, scoreless at Ladd People Stadium. Both teams kind of feeling each other out. We've seen a lot of running tonight so far and a couple of flags, and there is one coming in right there, as I mentioned. Prior to the snap, legal procedure. On the offense, it's a five-yard penalty, still second down. So they'll push the Panthers back. It'll be about second and 11 here. Corey, Coach Jackson told us earlier this week when he was sitting in his office, he said, for some reason, between the 20s, we're good. But we get to that red zone, we're kind of kind of hit the wall there. Yeah, it's a situation to where when you march in between the 10, 20s, you want to go ahead and be effective and put six points on the board. And that's something that this Murphy offense early in the season had done a great job of. But you mentioned over the last three games, I think they've only scored maybe 17 points combined. That's it. Pass, pass two games. We're under 10 seconds here on the game clock. And with the play clock not being kept down on the field, that possibly could be a delay of game against Murphy. On the offense, five yard penalty, still second down. So the young quarterback for the Panthers has to realize, Corey, that the uh, play clock is not functioning. He's got to learn to be on it. And even though there are quadruple zeros on Lab People Stadium, 
scoreboard. That will take us to the end of the first quarter. And there it is on a penalty. We'll end the first quarter. We are notched up scoreless here at Lab People Stadium. We'll be back with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Don't move. A trunk or treat event is coming to Langan Park, hosted by the Mobile Police Department and Mobile Fire Rescue, Saturday, October the 19th from 4 to 8 p.m. It's a free, fun, and safe Halloween event for the entire family. Spooky fun throughout the park, police vehicles and fire trucks on display, costume contacts with prizes, and lots of candy for trick-or-treaters. Join us October the 19th, 4 to 8 p.m. at Langdon Park. I have known since I was in fourth grade that I was going to be a teacher. I really just truly enjoy coming to work every day and working with different sets of kids and just watching them grow and learn. I couldn't see myself doing anything other than teaching children, being a part of children's lives, being able to inspire them in a way that some people just aren't able to do. And to know that every day is a new day, a new opportunity to make a difference in the child's life means everything to me. Second quarter action here at Lab People Stadium. We're scoreless. Al Wheaton, Corey LeBounty on the sidelines is Kimberly Dunn. And it is second and long for the Panthers. China Powell gives us our first quarter statistics. Rushing yards for Davidson, 72, 34 for Murphy. No passing yards established by either one of these teams. No turnovers. So it's a situation, two penalties for 15 yards for Murphy, one for five yards for Davidson. Uh, evenly played first quarter, and there may be an interception on that play. It could be. Let's see what the officials say. It is. Say. It's going to be an interception. I don't think that they ball hit signaling. the ground. It, I don't believe it did either, Corey. They're signaling as the ball was being thrown out to Trent Craig. We can get a replay on this. I believe that is an interception, and they have ruled. And if it's not, it's awfully close and hard to see in that situation, but I never saw the ball hit the ground. I saw a lot of bobbling. The ball was bounced up, and when the ball bounced up out for the running back's hands, it was a situation to where Davidson just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Right. Davidson now inside the red zone territory with the ball being at the three-yard line of this Murphy Panther defense. We'll see how they wind up and see if they're able to put six points on the board with this prime real estate that they're in. Unfortunately, our replay was down at that moment, so we won't have that replay for you. But right now, we're going to give you some live action. DeAndre Portlock into the end zone, and that is a touchdown, a three-yard run for DeAdrian Portlock. I'm sorry, as the Davidson Warriors get on the board. Third rushing touchdown of the season by DeAdrian Portlock, and that meant just three yards. Tucks his cleats into the ground and does a good job cutting back. Gets our first score of the game, 6-0 to zero with the point after pending here for the Davidson Warriors. Delange with the kick. And it is up, so Davidson takes the lead 7 to nothing over Murphy after that interception. So, Corey, interesting that that happened right there as uh, the Warriors capitalized with that turnover from Murphy. Let's take a look at both of these coaches for tonight in our coaches comparison. Rick Pauley, first year at Rick Davidson, his overall record 22 and 27, has a career winning percentage of 4423. Hobbies and interests outside of work, he's gardening and husbanding. And you'd be surprised to know he worked in Walmart's auto shop for about 15 years. Now across from him, Coach Rico Jackson, we had him a couple weeks against MGM. 46-36 uh, in his career, has a career 568 career winning percentage, percentage. One surprising thing you know, he loves to go grocery shopping. He's an Alabama State graduate and also graduated from LaGrange High School over in Georgia. Right there in the middle, Corey, this guy's got big game experience. He's been to a state title game before. Has his brother on the staff with him as well. Right. So the coaching tree we talked about a couple of weeks ago, all familiar faces for Coach Rico. And, and you're in a situation to where in your first year you want to be around guys who you're comfortable with. And again, unfortunately, on that particular drive, that turnover led to six points. But two outstanding coaches, Coach Colley, part of this Murphy coaching tree for over 20 plus years. DeLonge's kick goes out of bounds. 
Let's see if uh, Murphy will have a re-kick or if they will just take the penalty. We're discussing it right now as Coach Jackson is calling his players over. And I believe they're just going to take the yardage on the penalty there and have great field position. I mean, it's a situation. Kick out of bounds. The coach has chosen to take it at the 35-yard line. Be first and 10, Murphy ball. All right, there's our white hat, Sean Kelly, with the call. It was a bit delayed, Corey. We could see the offense running on the field, but uh, first and 10 at the 35 for the Panthers. You definitely want to take advantage of that field position that you had. And now you're at the 35-yard line. Alex Howell again. Been run heavy in the first half. No passing yards by Murphy in the first quarter. Manley back in the backfield with him, providing some blocking. And he gets that ball out complete. On the catch for the Panthers. Pick that one up for them. Daniel Thompson, the six foot, 168 pound senior on the stop for the Davidson Warriors, came up and closed quickly, only allowing two yards to be gained by this Panther offense. Second and eight for Murphy. As we are in the second quarter, and the Panthers down seven points already, points off turnovers, an interception on the first play in the second quarter, and Davidson capitalizes and scores. Trip receivers to the bottom of the screen here. Looked like they're going to air it out, but no, they're going to keep it. Alex Howell on the run, and he is, wow, level core for maybe a one-yard game. It's a situation to where you're asking your linebacker, Charles Caber, to have a great shot, a legal shot, on the quarterback, wow. Alex Howell. And he went high, and they just crammed shoulders right there on the Davidson Warriors sidelines. But now you're looking at a situation to where it's third down and seven yards to go for the Panthers. And again, Tanaka Scott, the six foot four, 187 pound junior, has not been targeted yet tonight. So we'll see if he's just used as a decoy or if he's in the slot here and will get his first catch of the game. Just about to comment, he's lined up in the slot and we have a stoppage in play, just like you said, Cora. And Murphy has used their last time out. You've talked about it before. Coach Rico Jackson is not shy to burn these timeouts in the first half. No, it's a situation where he wants to go ahead and utilize the strategy that's at hand, does not want to give up the big play by the Davidson Warriors. On the sidelines, we have Kimberly Dunn. What's going on? Hey, I wanted to give you all a little bit of a weather update. We've had that rain move out of the way, so now we just have a slight breeze, and it is feeling wonderful down here on the field. And since the rain has moved out, we have had a lot more action um, coming from our stands and from both of these um, student sections. They're starting to get excited, cheering on their teams, creating an atmosphere of excitement here tonight. So I think you'll be starting to hear a lot of commotion coming from both of these sides. Don't forget at halftime, we'll have the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. Kimberly's going to take it up into the stands and try to get a winner with a question, and uh, she'll have them a multiple-choice answer. I know that's Corey LeBounty's favorite way to answer the question. <laughs> and question. the guys in the truck, like to watch, they like to watch the cow dance around with the football. So halftime, the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge will be coming up, so stick around and join us. Third and seven here for the Panthers. Howell has pressure, and they bring him down for a loss, pushing him back to about the 25-yard line. So the Davidson Warriors defense holds. Mer Standing at his own 11-yard line, back to punt. Gavin Hinn setting up at his 45 to receive. I think Hinn is going to stay away from this one as Murphy downs it at about the 47-yard line of Davidson. The Panthers come in averaging 14.7 points on offense, and the defense is allowing 20.7 uh, contests on defense. So, Corey, they've kind of had a flip of things recently as they went into the ball game with MGM. They were only giving up seven points a game, but then they lost two back-to-back to, -back to uh, Viger and to Theodore. So the Panthers trying to get out this hole and break a losing streak tonight. I agree with you. Trailing 7-0, to zero. Davidson wants to put together a positive drive right here and control the line of scrimmage. Hand off to Jalen Nash. Picks up about four yards as he crosses into a Panthedoff. Gets about a yard and a half. Now it's third and long for the Warriors as we approach eight minutes in the first half. 
has 33 tackles on the season, three tackles for loss. Davidson had zero passing yards also. Let's see if they're able to complete their first pass of the game. Handoff once again, this one to Jonathan Whitfield. He's got enough for the first down as he crosses the 40-yard line. And they're going to move the sticks as the Warriors are on the move. Third down and long, and you look for the Davidson Warriors to throw the ball. No, they want to give the ball to Jonathan Whitfield. He has 45 rushes on the season. Two rushing touchdowns, was able to go ahead and secure that first down. Great job by the offensive line up front. Jacoby Williams, Kobe Smith, center Bennett Vaughn, George Morris, and Edward Moffitt getting the type of push up front that Coach Colley has to be happy with. Offensive coordinator John Williams really in tune with his offensive line. The Warriors 37 yards away from hitting the end zone as Whitfield is bouncing. He takes the handoff going up top. But he is wrapped up and brought down for a loss of about three yards. Jawan Manuel, the outside linebacker, 6'1", 183-pound senior, gets his 13th solo tackle on the season. A negative play for the Davidson Warriors on first down. They had just gotten that push right. on third down, and here it is. They run to the strong side of the field and get negative yards. Second and 13, handoff to Whitfield. Up the middle he goes. Picks up a couple. It'll be third and about seven here for the Warriors. It's almost the identical down and distance situation we saw the Warriors moments ago on third down and long. Run right. the football to the right side of this big offensive line between George Morris and Edward Moffitt. Let's see if they decide to go to the same side and pick up another down. They've brought DeAdrian Portlock into the ball game, the big back. Seems as if uh, maybe it was a miscommunication on the handoff core. Yeah, I thought it was a nice RPO. He decided, I thought he was going to pull it out of the running back's gut. Right, but right, right. He couldn't decide whether to pull it or whether to take it. And then they were lucky there that they did not turn the football over. You're kind of in no man's land. You can have a pooch punt in this situation that would pin the Panthers even deeper into their own territory. Right. But it's a situation to where you just kind of look at your special teams and know your personnel. If you're Coach Cauley, you may even decide to take a timeout to talk about it. I think he is because he's standing right next to the official, probably waiting for that one second call. They have it on their watch, and he'll probably just take the timeout and get things together. That's their first All right, first let's take it down to the sidelines and check in with Kimberly Dunn once again. Yes, we were able to speak with Murphy's principal earlier, and now we are here with Davidson's principal, Principal Richardson. How are you doing tonight? Great, having a great time. Good. So tell us a little bit about the signature academies that Davidson has to offer. We have our Epic Academy, which is our engineering academy. Uh, we had a great night at preview uh, at, at uh, Mitchell Center. And we have a preview, or eighth grade preview coming up on October 20th. That's Sunday, October 20th at 2 o'clock. So we have a preview for any parent that wants to come to learn more about our academies or about the IB program or just about the school in general. Yes. Now, something else that y'all have that's exciting about Davidson is that y'all have a robotics program. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we have a robotics program. We actually placed second overall in the best robotics competition. And in the last 10 years, we've won it eight times. So. We're really proud of that. They're going to Auburn, I believe it's December 7th. Wow, that's wonderful. Now, I know this is your third year at Davidson, and before your father was principal for 14 years, and you were telling me a little bit about how that kind of inspired you to become principal. It did. I mean, just watching him and learning from him and seeing the effect that he had on, on students and young people inspired me to do this, and, and I got a great chance here at Davidson, and I just like uh, being there and, and, and you know helping the kids out and giving them every opportunity I can. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking right. time to speak with us, and we wish all the best tonight. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That pass incomplete to Jacob Tonman as uh, Davidson went for it, Corey, and could not complete it. But you can see Coach Tellis Stone on the sideline encouraging his Panthers defense to stand tall, and they did right there. So it's ball over on downs, and Murphy gets it at the 34-yard line. Yeah, I like the – Offensive play call, you go to the Good tight call. end. I Good mean, call. it's a situation to where that ball was a little bit overthrown. If your tight end's maybe two inches taller, he makes that catch in stride. <laughs> but now you have the Murphy Panthers. 
Craig still in the backfield. They hand it off to him. And he's brought down. The ball comes out. But the Panthers pounce on it. Was that Carlos Wheat, Corey? It really was yeah. Carlos Wheat. The Johnny six on the four, spot. 273 pounds <laughs> senior. And that ball just pops out. One of those unforced turnovers. It's a clean handoff. Just a great strip on the play, I do believe, by Cedric Johnson yep, coming yep. from his defensive end position, trying to create a turnover. Now you're looking at third down and 11 yards to go for the Murphy Panthers have not really had a lot of success running the football. I would like to see them, we saw them throw the football around the line and give Howell an opportunity to gain some success, whether it's a wheel route or go ahead and throwing it to your big wide receiver, Tanaka Scott. So far, this has been one of more of the old school uh, ball games, Corey. A lot of running, offensive uh, maneuvering to keep the ball and keep the play clock on your side. And Howell slips up on the turf for a loss, so it's going to be fourth down. And here comes the punting squad once again for the Panthers. Kassam Mayers, the 5'10", 208-pound senior, really disrupted that play for Howell. The play was designed for him to roll out right, but he was already in the backfield before he would have had an opportunity to turn and plant his feet. It was going to be an incomplete pass or some type of turnover. Now the Davidson Warriors are going to get the football in great field position. Scott punts this one. He had thought about taking it, but ran away. So works out to the Panthers' benefit as they down the ball at about the 25-yard line. 3.07 remaining in the first half, as you can see some of the scores scrolling in at the bottom of the screen. Davis is going to take over here, Corey, with three minutes. So I expect some run-heavy offense possibly right here from the Warriors. It's been a run-heavy ball game for both of these teams tonight. I agree with you, and that kind of does not surprise me from the Murphy Panthers standpoint. Right, and right. We know Rick Cawley, if he has an opportunity to stretch out and extend the clock, he's going to do so. But let's see how this offensive line here on this series reacts for the Davidson Warriors. They hand that ball off to Portlock, and in the middle, he just runs into a couple of Panthers. Well, they'll credit him with two yards as we continue to tick under three minutes here in the first half. Don't forget the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge will be coming up. Also, take a look at the bands we have here. And so far, the rain has stayed away, so pretty decent night so far, Corey LeBan. I agree with you, Al. Just a pleasant night for football. We mentioned the crisp temperatures. Portlock once again running into that big Murphy offensive line led by Jabarian Nettles and Karan Marion. It's nothing but meat in the middle right there, Corey. So they'll wrap you up quick. Wow, it's third down already. And both teams, you mentioned it, have been content to run the football, and thus we've had an extremely fast first half with two minutes remaining here in the second quarter. But the Big turnover inside their own territory. Yeah. That was an interception by the Davidson Warriors led the points. Murphy is out of timeouts. Hand that one off to Jonathan Whitfield. He's trying to squeeze his way through that wedge, but the Panthers just collide and bring him down. So it'll be fourth down. Davidson does have two timeouts remaining and Murphy is out as I just talked about it. As the punting crew runs onto the field for the Warriors. Austin Howard is the punter for them. And we'll see if Javante Carter is able to field this football. And special teams play. Who is Murphy's special teams coach? None other than the head coach. That's right, Rico Jackson. That's right. Special teams coach for Davidson right now, John Lambert and Rob Miller. They both share the duties. And it looks as if uh, Coach Carl is going to do another one of those situations. He's going to let the clock run and just uh, burn him a timeout right before delay of game. And there it is. Nice strategy being implemented by Coach Carly. So 7 nothing. Davidson on top. Al Whedon, Corey LeBounty on the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn, we're almost at halftime. And Corey, you just talked about it, been a run-heavy game for both of these teams. Thought we would have seen a bit more passing. And I thought before coming to the ball game, the weather would have had an effect on it. But it looks like the showers have bypassed us and uh, had a couple guys slip down on the field turf. 
doing the ball game, but uh, we shall see as we continue on here toward halftime. And don't forget at halftime, the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge is coming up. Kimberly Dunn will climb into the stands and try to get a winner. Ask them a Chick-fil-A trivia question. They answer correctly, they'll get hooked up with a Chick-fil-A prize pack. And of course, Corey, it's multiple choice as you always love. I love those multiple choice answers that you always give me an opportunity to choose from and look forward to getting your brain buster. Well, later Corey, on you know, you know what? Well. I'm, before the season's out, I'm gonna think about it. I might give you a multiple choice brain buster, <laughs> but not tonight. But <laughs> I, right. I might slip you one in before Fair the enough. season wraps up. <laughs> Fair enough. The biggest thing for the Davidson Warriors here is not to have a punt sail over your head. You want to go ahead and have and kick it cleanly. That punt goes straight up and to the right. Howard shanks it, just like one of my drives off the number one tee at Spring Hill College sometimes, Corey. <laughs> Unfortunately, it goes into uh, the seventh fairway. So Murphy will have great field position here with 47 seconds remaining in the second quarter. But here's the biggest thing. They have no timeouts no time remaining right. here. So any plays that offensive coordinator Justin Thomas comes, comes away with is going to have to be toward the sidelines. And quarterback Alex Howell has to have the vision and know, and as well as whoever he throws it to, to get out of bounds and quickly clock the football if they're not able to get out of bounds. Murphy in the pistol formation with Craig behind him. Little play action. Tries to connect with Craig, but Howell has to scramble for his life and takes a loss as they're going to down him at the 40. And, Corey, as you just said, Murphy has no timeout, so you have to run tempo, hurry, 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 to try to get some points on the board if you can before the first half wraps up. It's hard to make substitutions on that play. You yep. have to go ahead and know what the next play is going to be. You've wasted close to 20 seconds trying to get that play in, and you might as well go ahead and clock it and kill that down because you don't have any timeouts remaining in this situation. Trips to the top of the screen. Howell on the run. The Warriors chasing him. He throws it with possibly one second remaining here on the his feet. We mentioned even though this is turf that we had that rain to come right. in and it may be a little slick, but again, some 43 seconds ran off of the clock right there. You probably in that situation wanted to get on the ball much quicker. And now you look at Davidson going to be in their super duper pre-bent defense. Oh yeah, they have three men lined up at about the seven yard line and sending a fourth back because we know some type of Hail Mary play is going to come here as Howell just needs to roll to his right. But they go with the quick out, get to the up back there, and Davidson's going to wrap him up. And as they wrap him up, Corey, that's going to wrap it up for us in the first half with the ball game 7 to nothing. Davidson on top of Murphy. Interesting first half. We just talked about it. A lot of running, a lot of, uh, I guess, feeling each other out here with the ball game for both of these coaches. Yeah, I agree with you, Al. It's a situation where points off turnovers have been the difference here in the first half as Davidson was able to capitalize on that interception deep in the red zone area and was able to punch it in. All right, let's go down to the field. Kimberly is with uh, Coach Rick Colley. Coach, how are you feeling about your team's performance so far tonight? We're playing really hard, so I'm proud of that. Uh, you know, the first drive, we get a big play and a penalty stops that drive, or we, you know, at least can get a field goal out of that, and it looks like points are going to be scarce in this. So, you know, that was big, and, you know, another penalty backed us up. So we got to clean that stuff up and hopefully uh, attack on a couple of scores here and try to get some breathing room. But they're going to come out fighting. Those kids got a lot of heart, so they're not going to go anywhere. So what does your team need to do in order to accomplish this win tonight? I keep doing what we're doing, keep putting pressure on the quarterback. You know, uh, they're still a big play team, so we cannot let them get behind us. We got to keep doing what we're doing on defense, and we got to score on offense. We got to pick up first downs and run the clock. All right, well, I'll let you get with your team. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Coach. Thank you, Kimberly. I appreciate that. I'm glad Coach Carley brought that up. Murphy is a big play team, Corey. We've seen them do that before. I agree. I mean, they've decided to come out a heavy dose of running the football, something yeah. we're not used to seeing the Panthers. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, the clock management was not where Coach Rico would like it. But it's a situation that he's only trailing by one touchdown, 7-0, to our score here at Ladd People Stadium, in favor of the Davidson Warriors. All right, Murphy's not out of it. Right now, it's time for halftime. Don't move. We'll be back with more. It's the MCPSS High School Football Game of the week.
Parents, will your child be four years of age on or before September 1st, 2020? If so, mark your calendar for this January for pre-K open enrollment. In order to enroll your child, you must complete the online pre-K registration. For a complete list of pre-K sites as well as screening information and selection dates, visit mcpss.com. For your chance to be a part of Alabama's first class pre-K program, log on this January. In Mobile County Public Schools, we are learning today, leading tomorrow. Hello, I'm Renee Phillips, your host of Home Room. Will you join us as we talk with the students, teachers, and staff about all of the great things happening in our schools? That's right, Renee. Not only are we here to keep you informed about the great things happening in our schools, but to also keep you updated on safety issues. Our show, Safe Schools, looks at ways to keep your child and our students safe. Not only are we looking at ways to keep your child and our students safe, but to keep you informed on how to connect with us. Manténgase informado aquí en Conexión a Padres. And we also score big from pre-K to high school with MCPSS Athletics. And then Inside Education puts it all together for you, showing you the ins and outs about news and events taking place across the Mobile County Public School District. We do this to keep you informed. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. It is halftime at Lab People Stadium. Let's take it down to the field and enjoy the sounds of the Sound of Mobile, the Davidson High School Marching Band. All right, let's take it into the stands for the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge with Kimberly Dunn. All right, we're here with our Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge, and I have Selena here that's going to try to answer our question tonight. How are you doing, Selena? I'm doing good. So y'all are here supporting a player tonight. Who is it that you're supporting? My nephew, Jacoby Jones, number 82. All right, and he plays for those Murphy Panthers, so we're wishing them the best of luck. Are you, uh-oh. Are you ready for our question tonight? Yes. Okay, here's our question. This this southern nut is the official nut of the state of Alabama, okay? So here's your multiple choice. Is it the pecan, the almond, the peanut, or the walnut? Oh, my God. Ooh. I'm going to have to go with the pecan. The pecan, yeah. That was it. That was it. <laughs> So you win our Chick-fil-A prize pack. There's some goodies in here as well as some Chick-fil-A gift cards. So we hope that y'all enjoy those. Thank you so much for taking the time to do our trivia challenge. Thank you. (laughs) 
Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. Corey, I like that one there. The uh, all those nuts I would eat personally, but a pecan is the official nut for the state of Alabama. So let's take let's take a look at some uh, halftime stats for uh, the first quarter, second quarter. There. Well, I mean, it's been a tale of running the football or the lack of being able to run the football. Davidson has 97 rushing yards in the first half, zero passing yards. No turnovers, only has two penalties for 15 yards, and that has allowed us to play a 45-minute half, a 45-minute half of football here at Lab People Stadium. Right. You look at the Murphy Panthers, they were only able to establish 20 rushing yards, two passing yards, two 22 wow. total offensive yards in the first half. You like to see that in one possession if you're a coach. But in this situation, 7-0, to zero, the Davidson Warriors are leading the Murphy Panthers. Just like we talked about in the first half, definitely a run-oriented ball game for both of these teams. So uh, interested in what's going to happen in the second half of this contest because Davidson is going to get the ball first, Corey, here in the second half. So as we get ready for that, we'll come back later on and talk about some uh, second half adjustments as to what you think what will happen. So we'll take a break and come back with more halftime and take a look at the uh, Murphy Panthers marching band. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. When it comes to getting your child through school, at times it can be overwhelming. What school to choose, what classes to take, how to apply for college. To help answer these questions and more, we would like to invite you to join us on Parent Connect as we take an in-depth look at some of the issues and concerns you may have about your child's education. So get connected with Parent Connect weekly right here on the MCPSS TV network. My name is Harshini. I'm a junior at Davidson High School, and after graduation, I plan on pursuing a career in dermatology. Currently, I'm taking science classes such as AP Chemistry, Biology, and Human Anatomy, which will help me pursue my career. I feel as though Mobile County is preparing me for my career choice in that they provide rigorous classes that help me think further beyond just what I'm learning. I'm Harshini Cannon, a junior at Davidson High School, and I'm learning today so I can be a leader tomorrow. From birth up until school age, you know, he was a fast developer, fast learner. He was always a happy person. Every time you seen him, he had a smile on his face. The day I lost my son, I got that phone call. It was like my whole world just stopped. All I wanted to do was see my son, and I wasn't able to see my son until I had to go to the funeral homes. I think that was one of the hardest things that a parent has to do. At Mobile County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. I'm Tracy Train, and I'm in the Healthcare and Dental Academy at Theodore High School. In the Dental Academy, I'm working alongside dental professionals getting hands-on training from those already working in the industry. Shadowing them on the job makes me want to work even harder because now I know what I want to be. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. To find out more, visit mcpss.com. Hi, I'm Todd. And I'm Terry, and we'd like to invite you to join us as we take a look at nature in ways that you've never seen before. Come travel with us as we go coast to coast to uncover some of the most interesting animals. And some of the most beautiful scenery that's offered outdoors. You can join us on our nature adventures right here on the MCPSS TV network. A Trunk or Treat event is coming to Langham Park, hosted by the Mobile Police Department and Mobile Fire Rescue, Saturday, October the 19th from 4 to 8 p.m. It's a free, fun, and safe Halloween event for the entire family. Spooky fun throughout the park, police vehicles and fire trucks on display, costume contacts with prizes, and lots of candy for trick-or-treaters. Join us October the 19th, 4 to 8 p.m. at Langham Park. We welcome you back to Lab People Stadium. It is halftime, and the Davidson Warriors have exited the field to make room for the Murphy Panthers as we'll take a listen to the marching Panthers of the Murphy High School. We'll take it down to the field momentarily.
I believe my child's school is um, probably one of the best ones I could have picked in Mobile. She's in the PACE program. The teachers are phenomenal. The principal uh, couldn't ask for a better principal. The research that I had done myself, I believe the quality of education in Mobile County Public School System is excellent. For me and my child, I'm going to stick with the public school system. I think it's the way to go. A teacher is one of the biggest...
That was the sound of the Murphy High School Marching Band. Let's take it down to the sidelines. And Kimberly Dunn, she has uh, Coach Rico Jackson with her for some uh, second-half comments. What's going on, Kimberly? Coach, what was the atmosphere like in the locker room? I mean, we just got to get things going on offense. Our defense is playing well, so we got a lot of work to do. Yeah, your team seems like they're coming out here motivated. So what did you say to them to encourage them to get them motivated for the second half? I mean, they know what to do. Ain't too much, so we got to come out here and execute. Well, I'll let you get to your team. Best of luck to y'all tonight. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. We're going to take a quick break and come back. And, Cora, we'll revisit your checklist and talk about some second-half adjustments. It's halftime here for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. My name is Parchini. I'm a junior at Davidson High School. And after graduation, I plan on pursuing a career in dermatology. Currently, I'm taking science classes such as AP Chemistry, Biology, and Human Anatomy, which will help me pursue my career. I feel as though Mobile County is preparing me for my career choice in that they provide rigorous classes that help me think further beyond just what I'm learning. I'm Parshini Cannon, a junior at Davidson High School, and I'm learning today so I can be a leader tomorrow. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. Lab People Stadium. I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Coralie Bounty on the sidelines as Kimberly Dunn. As you can see, Davidson up 7 to nothing over Murphy in this 7-8 Region 1 showdown. Corey, second half adjustments. What would you say uh, both these teams need to do tonight? I think it's a situation where Murphy definitely has to complete some type of passes. I mean, you right. only have 22 total yards of offense in the first half, and that's just not going to get it done. I mean, if that was your game plan going in, which it really was, you have to dominate the line of scrimmage. And if you're not able to control the line of scrimmage, okay. Alex Howell, when he tries to throw the football, Coach Cauley mentioned it. There's great pressure being applied by the defensive line of his D Davidson Warriors, and right. that's very important now. And 7-0, to zero, our score, you look at points off turnover, seven points so far for the Davidson Warriors, getting the ball deep in the Panthers' territory, able to punch it in from three yards out. Our only score of the night, a lot of football left to be played, but again, this Murphy Panther offensive line has to give their quarterback time to throw the football. Now, for Davidson, what do they need to probably work on in the second half for an adjustments they need to do? Continue to take care of the football. Okay. No turnovers and don't hurt yourself. Don't do too much. You've been able to control the line of scrimmage offensively, and I think that's huge for the Davidson Warriors at this point in time. You've been able to control the time of possession. Again, you've been able to capitalize to get the points right. off turnovers, but again, I think just clock control is very important. Let's revisit your checklist right quick. We'll get that up and uh, take a look at that. Some of the things you talked about uh, for both of these teams at the top of the broadcast. Red zone relief. The Murphy Panthers have not gotten into red zone territory tonight. Have not. So they're going to have to change that in the second half and give themselves an opportunity to score the football. Panther positive plays, being able to run the rock I talked about. That's something only 22 rushing yards in the first half. They have to go ahead and try to quadruple that here in the second half. Tackling together, they've done a fairly good job of tackling. You look at the total right. offensive yards, 97 rushing yards by the Davidson Warriors offense. It's not a lot of yards. They've done a good job of tackling. There's been a couple of busted plays that Davidson has been able to capitalize on. You look at the Davidson Warriors, and on my checklist for the Davidson Warriors, they needed to limit the Panthers' big plays, 20 or four plus yards. They've done an outstanding job of limiting this potent offense of the Murphy Panthers, controlling the line of scrimmage. We mentioned that because yeah, they have yeah. 97 rushing yards total, and so far protecting the pigskin, that one turnover that the Davidson Warriors was able to force has been the difference. So, so far, Davidson's been a, doing a good job of making sure they don't turn the football over. Appreciate that, Corey, revisiting your checklist. 
from the top of the broadcast. Interesting ball game so far. Interesting game plans that both of these uh, coaches and offensive coordinators have put together coming into tonight. As we talked about, Davidson will be receiving the second half kickoff. So as the Panthers run to the sideline right there, we'll be moments away from kicking off in the third quarter. Al Wheaton, core of the bounty, down on the sideline. We have Kimberly Dunn, had some early showers in the contest, but those all went away. The field looking good, Corey. I believe you were here last night doing PA work for our Williamson and W.S. Neal. So uh, you're back again, man. You're doing double duty this week, buddy. Yeah, it's a big time win for the Williamson Lions yeah. last night, picking up that big 4A Region 1 win. And there's a lot of great football contests going up along the Mobile Baldwin County areas with huge implications. You mentioned at the top of the broadcast, the 7A Region 1 standings that was very important here. And again, this is the playoff push. The Murphy Panthers at three and three, yeah. trying to be in a situation to where they can advance their record to three and two in region play. And at last time I saw the Bryant Hurricanes we're leading the Baker Hornets. Wow, okay. And that's huge because Bryant trying to get their first region win and their first win of the season. So you don't want to look ahead of any opponent, but here it is. We're going to have a great second half of action. That would be quite an interesting surprise if Bryant pulls that off because Baker lost last week to Fairhope, Corey, and we know every win is crucial as you get toward the stretch here toward the end. Kicking off for Murphy. Reston Kambabala, first time calling his name tonight. And the Warriors are going to retrieve that one at about the 20. Bring it up to about the 31-32 yard line. And we'll get a look at the uh, Davidson Warriors here in the second half. Got to remind the parents. It's a long weekend. Teacher work day is happening Monday, so it's no school for the students this Monday. Don't forget, it's a teacher work day. So uh, kids will not be going to school this Monday, so make some plans and prepare the kids. I'm pretty sure they're very excited about that, Corey. I know my two are. Without question, that long three-day weekend, you know the kids are looking forward to it. The football players will be right back in the film room Sunday night and probably early mo Monday morning practice as well. Hand off to DeAdrian Portlock. He picks up a couple, taking Davidson to second down. And Coach Rick Colley and offensive coordinator John Williams coming out of the locker room doing the same thing, running the rock, Corey. I wouldn't expect anything different from the offensive coordinator John Williams. Again, Davidson's offense averaging 17.8s per game. The defense of Murphy giving up 20.7, but you have this Panther defense who's going to have to tackle well. And it's something that tackling together, pouncing Panthers is what I called it on my checklist to begin the telecast. Now you're in a situation here to where if you're Murphy, you talked about coming out and establishing dominance and getting that stop. Here it is third and four out. Javante Johnson on that quick little end around sweep there. Short yardage. Davison staying in front of the sticks a lot tonight. And another thing they're doing, using a lot of the game clock. Nash in the backfield, they hand it off to Johnson once again on a little counter action. And he is short, maybe about two yards, Corey. So it'll be fourth and two for Davidson. Tawan Manuel on the stop for this Panther defense, the 6'1", 183 pound senior. And that's gonna be four downs and out for the Davidson Warriors. Only took off two minutes of time. Here it is, the Panthers offensively need to get some type of spark and we'll see how offensive coordinator for the Murphy Panthers, Justin Thomas, decides to open this second half. Javante Carter back to receive the punt, takes it at about the 20, 31 yard line, comes up the middle. Close to the midfield stripe as he is down to about the 48. So good return by Carter right there. And some great field position for the Murphy Panthers coming out on the field for the first time. The offense here in the second half. Now, if you're the Davidson Warriors, you don't want to get lulled to sleep because it's a situation where you only gave up 
22 total yards of offense in the right, first half. Right. No passing yards were giving up. None. Uh, but it's a situation to where if you're Davidson, you don't want to let these Panther wide receivers get behind you because we know that the Panthers can strike extremely quickly. Manley back in the ball game in the backfield with quarterback Alex Howell. Had one interception that led to points off the turnover. They go with the quick out as the Panthers getting that one completed up to about the 45 yard line of Davidson on that catch right there, Jacoby Jones. Alex Howell, something this Panther offense is predicated upon, just confidence through Alex Howell. When he plays and gets his feet set, that offensive line gives him time, they can pick this Warrior defense apart. Trips to the bottom of the screen, Adrian Milton at the top, second and two. To go to his strength, which is rolling outside of the pocket. First and 10 ball on the Davidson 29 yard line. Tanaka Scott lined up in the slot, Corey. They have not attempted a pass toward his way, I don't believe. Manley up the middle. Boy, he's got a hole keeping those legs going. I believe that's enough for a first down. And we talked about how evenly matched. On ball at the 19. Still in that pistol formation. Howell on the keeper. Brought down about, about, about the 10 yard line, Corey. Nice run by Howell there. It'll be second and short for the uh, Murphy Panther offense, and they come out the locker room looking pretty good. Yeah, the Warriors are not able to get the type of penetration in the backfield that they were able to get in the first half, and all it takes, we've seen the speed exhibited by Howell once he gets past the line of scrimmage. That's something rolling out he was not able to do, wasn't able to break containment in the first half. Second down and one yard to go for the Panthers. Also, one other thing he's doing is paying attention to the play clock as well. Our play clock is not functioning here at Ladd Stadium, so the play clock being kept down on the field by the officials. Howell waits for the hole to open, and it does as he gets down to the five-yard line, so it'll be first and goal for the Murphy Panthers. Their first time touching the ball in the second half, turning out to be pretty productive so far. Yeah, seven and eight play drive right here. Tackle made by Rashard Kaiser, the safety, comes up the 5'10", 165-pound junior. Now it's a first down and goal situation to go for the Panthers as the clock continues to run on the best drive of the contest by Murphy. I would go right back to Howell. I believe, I'm with you there, Corey. First and goal, ball at the five yard line. Manley takes the handoff, gets up to about the two or three. As he falls forward with his momentum, it'll be second and goal. Oh, a little different package here yep. in the, that's exactly where it is. Corey LeBound to get out of my binoc. Not able to, and that's what worried Coach Cawley. Right. Going into halftime, he knew that he had a formidable opponent across the field, and the Panthers now an extra point away from tying this contest. Kumbabala is six for 10 for extra points. High snap. And it is good. We're tied 7-7 seven to seven for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. We'll be back with more action. My name is Harshini. I'm a junior at Davidson High School. And after graduation, I plan on pursuing a career in dermatology. Currently, I'm taking science classes such as AP Chemistry, Biology, and Human Anatomy, which will help me pursue my career. I feel as though Lowell County is preparing me for my career choice in that they provide rigorous classes that help me think further beyond just what I'm learning. I'm Parshini Cannon, a junior at Davidson High School, and I'm learning today so I can be a leader tomorrow. Don't forget, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we want to show you how we're wearing it in pink tonight. Kimberly Dunn, she's on the sideline with pink. But also, if you notice on your television screen, play drive, two-yard touchdown by Breland Manley. And we are tied up 7-7 seven to seven as Davidson brings that ball up to about the 26-yard line 
on that return, Javante Johnson. Great drive Murphy put together there, Corey. Yards, and that's huge. And a nice answer for the Murphy Panthers, just what offensive coordinator Justin Thomas needed. But now let's see if this Panther defense can feed off of the offense. Sometimes that's all it takes. You saw the Davidson Warriors go four and out. Right. Coach Cawley wants them to be able to answer this bell and be able to have some type of ball control the way they were in the first two quarters. Brown hands that ball off to Jalen Nash. He picks up maybe a yard. And Coach Carley talked about it going into the half, getting ready for the big play from Murphy. He knows they have quick strike ability, but they kind of drew that one out with a long drive and did it the old-fashioned way. Cladarius Morissette, the defensive lineman, 6'2", 326-pound senior on the stop for Telly Stone's Murphy defense. And no gain on the play for the Davidson Warriors. Going to bring up second down and 10 yards to go. I want to see if Coach Cawley is going to decide to allow offensive coordinator John Williams to open it up and possibly set up a little play action as Michael Brown was 11 for 11 one week ago. Second down carry there for the Warriors. The Adrian Portlock picks up maybe one as they inch the uh, yard down his marker a little further. Maybe two, Corey. It's third and long for Davidson. What's amazing to me is how the ebbs and flows of the game work to where the Panthers weren't able to establish anything in the first half offensively, came yep. out and were able to get that stop. And now after you put seven on the board, the defense is playing with a lot more energy as well. Portlock and Nash in the backfield. They give that one off to Gavin Hinn on the end of the round. And Gavin Hinn runs into a house full of Panthers as it'll go to fourth down for Davidson. Don't forget, coming up in a little bit, you talked about it earlier, Corey, the game of the week brain buster. We're going to put it out there. It won't be multiple choice. I'll let you know that. But I'm going to try to work <laughs> one of those in for you before the season's is over. So uh, coming up maybe between the quarters, we'll give that to you, the game of the week brain buster question. So three and out for Davidson. Austin Howard back to punt. His last punt, he shanked it. Gets his foot good into this one. Nice punt. Fair catch called on by Javante Carter. So Murphy at their own 35-yard line after a 55-yard scoring drive. They have the ball back at 336 remaining in the third quarter. Situation, Murphy 3-3 three and three overall on the season with a 2-2 two and two region record. The Davidson Warriors were able to defeat the MGM Vikings a week ago, up in their region record to two and three, two and four overall. They played a very tough schedule. You look at next week, Murphy's going to be at Baker. Yep, that's and huge. Davidson's going to be at Theodore. Yep. A lot of unfinished football here yet to be played, but what an outstanding contest so far. Yeah, Murphy has all uh, region games left. Manly on the run, but he might run out of the region into the end zone. Wow but he's definitely into Warriors region as he goes to the 30-yard line with a big run, Corey. Freeland Manley only came in with 24 rushes on the season. That's going to be his longest rush of the season. One rushing touchdown. Manley only had 89 rushing yards as well on the season because right. he had been injured. Sure. He's a fresh body tonight as Therris Wheeler is not playing tonight for the Panthers. The senior, 5'10", 216 pounds, really takes advantage of his touches here in the second half. First to 10 ball on the 30-yard line of Davidson. And Murphy has seemed to have gotten the ship in order here. Hand off to Manley once again. He hits the hole. Got some real estate in front of him as he just debos the cornerback and pushes him to the ground, Corey, as he goes out of bounds at about the 20. Credit to offensive coordinator Justin Thomas and head coach Rico Jackson for not straying away from their game strategy, which was to run, run, and run some more. Only 22 yards of total offense in the first half did not matter because they definitely surpassed that here in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Panthers once again. Manley got his uh, some action last week. His first ball game back from being injured, but tonight he's showing out, Corey. Trent Craig in the ball game right now. They hand off to him. And he's got a lot of real estate trying to get to that 10-yard line. 
couple rooms down from us, we can hear the uh, Murphy coaches shouting here in the press box. You have the offensive coordinators and the offensive coaching staff is right next to us. Yeah. And you can see the excitement that they're bringing, banging on the counters, knowing that the run game is really being successful at this point in time with 155 remaining here in the third quarter. And the way we know Rico Jackson, this is the way he loves the court. If he could run it every time, he said he would. Doesn't bother him at all. Second and one, Manley back in the ball game. Trip receivers to the bottom. Tanaka Scott lined up in the middle. Looked like that play was possibly busted. Could have been an RPO. Howell keeps it, but he's got enough for the first down as he runs out of bounds at about the eight. Looks like it's going to be a situation that it will pick up the first down for the Panthers. Also will bring up a first down and goal. Yep. The Davidson Warriors defensively are really Coach Alex Howell on the football field. He's acting as a coach from his quarterback position. The impact player knows the faster that the plays come in, the offensive line is starting to execute. Miles Boyd, Douglas Boyce, center Marquise Jackson, Jalen Haston, and Carlos Wheat starting to get that push, a hat on a hat, here in the third quarter. Possibly look for another run. Jalen Williams comes in and checks in at the halfback slot. Manley to the left, but Howell keeps it up the middle. He goes. Looks like some possible hands to the helmet, but it doesn't matter because that's a touchdown for Alex Howell. Eight-yard run, and Murphy is on top. 14-0 run if they're able to execute this extra point. And that's, uh, even though we only have 125 remaining here in the third quarter, that's a nice eight yard touchdown run and another sustained drive by this Panther offense. And if you're Rick Cawley, you can't be happy knowing that your defense has been on the field for most of the third quarter. Extra point block, Kambabala was seven for 11 on the season and that one is blocked so it's 13 to 7 as the PAT is no good and we look like we have a Davidson Warrior player down on the field injured in pain core so score 13 to 7 look right there quarterback Alex Howell led a nice drive for his Panthers all right we have a break right here between a change of possession we'll get on the Game of the week, brain buster question. What former Murphy head coaches are still active head coaches in the area? So what former Murphy head coaches are still active head coaches in the area? That's our game of the week, brain buster core. We'll come back to you maybe on the other side of fourth quarter, see if you got an answer. I see you nodding your head over there. You Got the wheels turning? Well, I tell you what, I think the <laughs> firehouse subs has given me and sustained a little energy. Give okay, me that energy, okay. that brain food that I needed to possibly get this one correct. Come bobble on for the kickoff. On the carry for Davidson, Jalen Nash with the kickoff return. And the Panthers are hustling to get him out of bounds at the 25 yard line. So Davidson three and out with their first possession in the third quarter and Murphy has capitalized with two quick scores they're on top 13 to 7. Well you're in a situation where you're looking at the first quarter statistics and Murphy only had 20 rushing yards right you look at halftime I do believe they only had 22 rushing yards here so far they've had close to 120 total rushing yards in the third quarter alone which is very impressive Hand off to Portlock. Oh no, keeper on that one. And boy, Micah Brown is brought down Jamari Butler from his defensive end position. And that's huge. I mean, you see the talent of this young man. I don't know if we're able to call up a replay or not on the play, but you're looking at him coming from his defensive lineman position. And he can be a stand up rusher or put three fingers in the dirt and still get after you. He's very explosive off of the end, but that's a huge loss for the Davidson Warriors. Speaking of losses, Corey, looks like one of the Warriors is down right now. Left guard Kobe Smith down on the turf. And Try Butler. to look at the replay, see if we can see if something happened. 
Butler just comes unblocked, and I don't know how you miss him at 6'5", 217 pounds. Right. Again, has 11 and a half sacks, make that 12 and a half sacks on the season. Has offers by Tennessee. First full year of high school football. Unbelievable. Michael Brown has plenty of time and connects across the middle with a nice pass right there. Gets that one out to Zenda McMillan but just a bit short of the first down. McMillan comes away with his fourth reception of the season, the 5'10", 150-pound senior. Looks like it's going to bring up third down and one yard to go. And again, that's Davidson's first completed pass, if I'm not mistaken, of the game as yeah. well. And China Powell nods her head, letting me know that it is the first completion of the game for the Warriors. Nice pass by Brown. Hauled back and threw it. Nice tight spiral. He's going to keep it. But he can't fake out the Panthers. The defense stays home, and they wrap him up, and that'll move it to fourth down. Wayne Houston, the defensive lineman, 5'9", 264-pound senior, gets the stop on the last play of the third quarter here at Lab People Stadium. We have reached the end of three as Sean Kelly gives us the signal. We'll be back with more action. Only one more quarter to go. Murphy's on top by six. Don't move. Sidelines. All right, Corey, we put the question out there. We're going to reveal the answer here in a second. Let's see if we can get it up right quick. Your Game of the Week Brain Buster, what former Murphy head coaches are still active head coaches in the area? You want to take a guess at that? Yeah, that will be Ron Lee uh -huh. at St. Luke's uh -huh. and maybe Rick Cawley over at Davidson. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And if there's another one, it escapes me at this point in time. Give them the answer, Miss Diane. Put it up there. Here's one more, Corey. Terry Curtis. Coached the Murphy Panthers from 1993 to 1998. I can't believe I stumped you on that one, Corey. The Lugani. dean. The I dean of the coaches dean. in the area. Yep. <laughs> Terry Curtis. <laughs> and I thought you would have easily knocked that one out the park, but uh, I guess I slipped one by you, young man. <laughs> Two out of three, 66%, just not good enough, Al. Just not good enough. Just well, not you know good what? For, me. for that, Corey. I may give you a multiple choice for sure now before the season take, is over. I'll take that one. I'll take all Panthers here in the second half as the offensive line and offensive coordinator Justin Thomas has been able to establish the line of scrimmage like he would like to. Officials discussing it. Flag, flag came in before the play started. Offsides against Davidson, so that'll be a free five yards for Murphy. Looks like uh, official referee Sean Kelly couldn't get his mic on there, so it'll be second and about six here for the Panthers. Hand off to Manley again. And he's doing his uh, bet the 30, sorry about the 41-yard line. I'm sorry, 46-yard line. So nice run from Trent Craig. And the sticks are moving once again for the Murphy Panther. Yeah, that's something that, again, controlling the line of scrimmage. You look at the players and the O-linemen really sticking with their blocks. And any time you're able to get in that second level of defense for the Davidson Warriors, they've been on the field probably half of the third quarter and so far here to begin the fourth quarter time of possession has definitely been dominated by the Murphy Panthers. Howell on the keeper after that RPO slashes his way up to about the 35 yard line it'll be second down for the Panthers. The Panthers again picking up positive yardage trying to control that line of scrimmage something that's very important. They wanted to pound the rock. That was the strategy 
They've been throwing the football with a lot of success. As you mentioned, Alex Howell has over 1,000 yards passing on the season, but the strategy has been totally different tonight here at Lab People's Stadium. Yeah, it has been all run, run the game plan for both of these teams tonight. Second and four, Ladd is calling it right up the middle with the keeper. Design play for Alex Howell as he moves the sticks once again. Manley coming up a little gimpy there. Oh, maybe it was a quick an equipment issue for him, so it looks like he may come off the field for a play, and Trent Craig comes back in. First to 10 for the Panthers. Ball at the 27-yard line, Corey. I tell you, it's a situation to where when you're looking, Alex Howell, quite an Optimus Club player of the week. I know Richard Burton does a great job with his Optimus Club every week of acknowledging the player of the week, and they have that big star on their helmet. There's only a few that go to special players each and every week, and Alex Howell is showing as the leader of this Panther team why he deserves to have one on his helmet. Yeah, he picked it up a couple weeks ago. Trent Craig on that carry almost carried a couple Warriors with them. I had a chance to uh, host the luncheon this past week, and Davidson player Kusim Mayers, he was the defensive line player of the week this past week, and we have a uh, downed Panther on the field. Two of them, Cor. Situation to not quite sure what happened, but anytime you have multiple players down from one team, never a good situation. There's a shot right there of Kusim Mayers. Had a chance to present him with his award. He had 14 tackles a fumble recovery and a sack the previous week as he was the defensive lineman of the week. And the kid was very grateful and uh, uh, very heartfelt about uh, being acknowledged as a player, as a high school player by the Crichton Optimist Club. And one of the things that you love to see the Crichton Optimist Club honor their players, Taylor Stallworth, the now New Orleans Saints defensive lineman. Okay. He's a former Crichton Optimist Club player of the year, and that's huge, too, to where when you have somebody, I know that they retired or went ahead and framed Taylor Stallworth's jersey during the spring game and was able to see that. But anytime you have a young man who has his dreams come true, who's part of the Mobile County Public School System, right, dominating right. on Friday nights, goes on to South Carolina undrafted and then to the NFL. It's something for these young players to aspire to on both teams. It is. So second and about three, a short three, as both of those Murphy Panthers come off to the sideline. Manly in the backfield. Possible little miscommunication as uh, Howell kind of shrugged him off like, no, I, I got it, buddy. Yeah, Braylon Manley, he was looking to go ahead and yeah. extend it and bounce it to the outside, but Howard decided to go ahead and keep it himself and take it. And no gain now, on the play. <laughs> but, but here's the situation, Al. The replay, I mean, you look at it, the miscommunication. The good thing is Howell did not turn the football over that's right, that's in right. that miscommunication because you're knocking on red zone territory right there inching outside of the 21-yard line with the clock still running and you holding on to the 13 to seven lead. Still third and three, ball at the 20 yard line of Davidson. This time they do give it to Manley, he keeps those legs going as he just falls forward with his momentum. And that'll be another first down as Murphy hits the red zone once again. You look at defensive end, for the Davidson Warriors, Cedric Johnson is just disgusted because he had an opportunity to trip Manley up in the backfield and was not able to do so. Not before the Panthers are able to pick up another first down, keeps the clock moving along with the chains. Ball at the 14 yard line of Davidson. Justin Thomas keeping the big beef in there as Manley is in there playing decoy. Howell takes that one up the middle. I don't know if they're going to credit him with the yard or not, Corey. Looks like possibly no gain, second down. The Davidson defense was able to come away with the big stop, Al. And now you're in a situation to where you're looking at second down and 10 yards to go. 
You don't want to get yourself out of field goal range right. if you're the Panthers. But I talked about red zone relief for the Murphy Panthers being on my checklist. Well, here we go, having an opportunity now on this drive inside of the 20-yard line. They need relief on the scoreboard to the tune of six points. Second and 10, big play right here for Murphy as we approach five minutes left in the ball game. Manly trying to shrug up the shrug off the Warriors and cannot. He's going to take a loss. It takes Murphy to third down. Both of these coaches still have three timeouts on the board. As Trent Craig looks like he's going to run into the ball game and check in for Manly. Take it down to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn has the injury update for us. Injury update for number 29 for the Murphy Panthers. And it looks like he just sustained an, uh, an ankle injury. They didn't want to go into detail about what was going on, but they're getting it wrapped up, and they're hoping to see him back on the field before this game is over. That's Jalen Williams she's talking about. Trent Craig goes nowhere but into a pack of Warriors. And decision time right here at the ball being placed at the 20-yard line. Reston Kambabala has only attempted one field. I'm sorry, he's one for one on field goals this year, Corey. So decision coming up here for Coach Rico Jackson. Well, you're looking at a long 34-yard field goal right here if you attempt it. You don't want it to be blocked because right. you don't want Davis in the score on special teams. We've had an extra point block. So you would much touchdown. rather it be a situation where you have a turnover on downs, but that was a good stop by Nolan Asbury and Demetrius yep. Johnson, making sure that no additional yardage was gained. And now you're looking at fourth down and 16 yards to go and letting the clock run down. And yeah, yep, there it is. I think he's doing the Rick Cawley strategy and we're gonna call the timeout, discuss it. And on Here's a Kumbabala, I believe. Take a look at the remaining Davidson schedule. Talked about it earlier. They're going to meet Theodore next week. Then they're going to be at Lee Montgomery, Robert E. Lee. And then they end it with Foley. And flip it over and look at Murphy's remaining schedule. We mentioned about that. They're traveling to Baker. And they are pretty much region tight, Corey. They travel to Baker, then they're at, then they're going to host Foley, and then host Bryant for the remaining Murphy schedule. So uh, Murphy region tight for the rest of the way, and Davidson has one out of region game with Robert E. Lee. Yeah, if you were to ask me, out of the Murphy Panthers remaining schedule, it's pretty tough when yeah, you start is. to look at it, but. 2016 was the last playoff appearance made by this Murphy Panther team. And we mentioned Rick Cawley being a former head coach of the Murphy Panthers, spending over 20 years of his career wearing the blue and gold. Looks like a 37-yard attempt for Reston Kambabala. Clean snap. Kick is up. And it is no good. No good on the attempt for Kambabala. The big thing was it had the distance to be able to go, but now you've looked at through two and a half quarters now, or the second half, rather, the third and fourth quarter, the Davidson Warriors have not been able to sustain any type of drive. I do believe they've been three and out a couple of times, and that's a situation to where now first and 10, they must strike here with 354 remaining, not necessarily passing the football, but getting yards after contact, even if it's on a type of draw. Down six points, Michael Brown getting that ball out to his receiver, has that complete as he gets that one out to Javante Johnson, picks up a couple. I mean, that's enough for the first down, so Johnson on the yards after catch moves the sticks. And it will be a first down. So Corey, 340 remaining here in the contest. Interesting ball game so far. Davidson with a big stand. Who you think about possibly a career tech education player of the game? Well, for the Murphy Panthers, Petey. Yep, Manly I'm with you. I'm with you has there. Has done a great job. Quarterback Alex Howell from her. Definitely a leader. Down 
for a loss. You just mentioned it, Corey, how the Panthers, last time they got into the playoffs, 2016, under Coach Rick Carley, had a regional record of 4-4, four and four, and that's the situation that Davidson's sitting at right now with four region losses. They would need to win out to possibly even try to snuff getting in because typically – if you're getting in at four and four, that means it's probably another team or another team that's four and four, and it comes down to what tiebreakers and things like that. So this ball game really huge for Davidson tonight. Brown does get that one completed to Jalen Nash, but he is swarmed upon by the Panthers as they're not letting him get close to the first down mark of the line. The gain is the 40. Going to be probably a half an inch of the football short. Yep, I believe so. But the clock is now stopped with 221 remaining. Looks like we may have some type of measurement possibly. Right, because the clock should be running because the pass wasn't incomplete. There we are. Sean Kelly is asking for the measurement, something we don't see too often in high school ball, Corey. But big, big here right now. If we're able to look at that replay in that situation, I want you to take a look and how quarterback Micah Brown, the young sophomore, is able to climb that ladder and step up away from the defensive end for the Murphy Pantlers, Mr. Down. Jamari Butler. That was huge because if he mm -hmm. doesn't step up, Butler goes and makes that sack. The clock continues to run. Now with 221, you have a fresh set of downs, and the play calling ability totally changes for offensive coordinator John Williams. I think now we have to uh – Get those passes and things going for the Warriors right now. Not very run heavy. Pass completed out to Johnson once again. And depending on the outcome of this game, it depends on who will be the player of the game. Yeah, you're right, if Corey. the Warriors are able to drive this football down, you never know who can make the big you play for know. either team. Ball at the 45-yard line as we approach close to one minute and 30 seconds remaining here in the contest. Play clock is not functioning down on the field. The referees are keeping the play clock. Brown rolls out incomplete as he tries to get it to Johnson on second down in about five. It'll be third and five. Another big play here coming up for Rick Carley and his Davidson Warriors. The good thing is that the play clock does stop for the Davidson Warriors. It allows offensive coordinator John Williams to go ahead and regroup and get with his quarterback, Micah Brown, about what is the best play. You're not going to be able to have any type of running success because if you're stopped with the play inbounds, the clock will continue to run. So right. you definitely want to make sure that your routes are crisp right here. And I would go to Gavin Hinn, probably – the leading wide receiver for the Davidson Warriors at this point in Up time. the middle goes Michael Brown up for the first down. He gets to about the 45-yard line of Murphy. Coach Rick Carley still has three timeouts, and we're under 130 here, and Davidson on the move. Corey, we're going to have a nail-biter tonight. Yeah, let's look at the defensive pressure. Does the offensive, I mean, does the pressure change for defensive coordinator Tellis Stone? Do you go ahead and continue to fall back in a prevent defense or you continue to come up the young quarterback? The sophomore quarterback, Micah Brown, fakes the pass on the run once again and needs to get out of bounds to stop the clock. And he picks up some crucial yardage, about seven yards on the play. Looks like it's going to be about maybe – Second and four, maybe six yards as Coach Carley asking for another yard there. He's also able to hurdle the bench on the sidelines once he's able to get there. But nice heads up play by the sophomore quarterback being able to get to the sidelines and then hurdle that bench at the end. That's huge. Now you're in a situation to where you're second down and four yards to go with the clock being stopped. Nice heads up play. Just take care of the football, young fella. Gavin Hinn at the top of the screen, but they're going to the bottom trying to connect incomplete. Trying to get that ball out to Asa Moncrief incomplete. Next week, we're taking it back to 8 Mile for a big 6-8 clash. It'll be Spanish Fort versus Blunt, so make sure you join us at 6.50 p.m. for a 6A Region 1 matchup. 6A always competitive, core as we take it back to Blunt next week. I agree with you. Another great matchup right here on the MCPSS Television Network. Third and four. Another third down for the Warriors. 
Browns decides to keep it, and he is wrapped up and brought down by Jamari Butler. His helmet comes off. I don't see any flags. And Coach Rick Cauley calling for a timeout right here. He would be able to stay in the contest because his helmet was ripped off, did not come off, and it's a situation where Coach Cauley is going to call that first timeout with 48 seconds remaining. You look at the replay, you probably you want to run away from the defensive end Butler because he is the strongest player wow. on the field for the Murphy Panthers and he shows why folks this young man has only played one year of high school football through six games he already has power five offers you look at the rip and the sw swim move that he puts on the offensive line and he just shows that he can go ahead and be an edge rusher or he can stand up as well so he's going to be a very right. versatile player he's a little bit raw but that's the type of raw ability that i would love to coach on the next level fourth and eight coming up here for davidson I believe I'm with you, Corey, incidental contact. I don't believe the young man intentionally tried to uh, rip the helmet off. So Brown should be allowed to come back in. Got to be able to protect your quarterback here and give him an opportunity to either throw the football or scramble out and make a play. So Brown is not in right now. Jordan Brown is in. Fourth and eight. Jordan Brown's fresh off the bench. It's okay. because It's was okay. That down. was fourth down. It'll be ball over on downs with 44 seconds remaining, Corey. And it looks like Murphy can take a knee and take this one to the house. So now we can kind of decide who would be our career tech education player of the game. And I think I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with Braylon Manley. As a young man Braylon who Manley. was injured. Yeah at the beginning of the season, right. had an opportunity to come in fresh and was not able to establish any rushing yards in the first half. But here in the second half, the Murphy Panthers offensive line came and was awoken by something that was said at halftime because they definitely didn't abandon their game plan, which was to run, run the football even more. Right, and right. they didn't have any success in the first half, but a total 180 in the second half is they were able to probably quadruple, like I mentioned at halftime, their rushing yardage, which is huge, and have scored 13 unanswered points here at Lab People Stadium. Yeah, so I, I, I agree with you on that. We'll give it to Braylon Manley and kind of did his best beast mode impersonation tonight as he came in and pretty much kind of took things over. And this was definitely a win that Murphy needed. Had a two-game losing streak as the offensive coordinator, Justin Thomas, expresses his uh, happiness with us next door <laughs> as it looks like the Murphy Panthers will pick up this win tonight. I would be happy, too. I mean, again, you only had 22 rushing yards in the first half. And then you turn around and you open up the third quarter with the 55-yard rushing drive. And then you turn around and then you answer that with close to a 65-yard rushing drive. So coming out of halftime, you automatically put up 120 rushing yards when you only had 20 in a half yeah, 22 of football. in the first half, right. So, so. so very impressive demonstration by the Murphy Panthers coaching staff sticking to what they really believed in. Tanaka Scott tonight, the 6'4", 187-pound junior, I don't think he had a pass targeted his way. And if I'm not mistaken, Murphy maybe only threw three or four passes the entire game. If that, yeah, I, I don't recall too many myself. We know one of them it turned up being an interception, which was the first play of the second quarter, right down at about the two-yard line. Yeah, this is just a big win uh, and, a, and a heartbreaking loss for the Davidson it Warriors is. It because is. they did everything right in the first half. But Coach Cauley mentioned it at halftime. Look, we still have a half to play. It's not necessarily that his team came out flat in the second half. It's just that his team was not able to get over the hump offensively until this last drive here to end the fourth quarter and really gave themselves an opportunity to tie this game. But that's all you could ask for. And then you take away their quarterback, Michael Brown, for the last play of the game, and Jordan Brown comes in cold. And even though it the play was dropped, it was a situation to where you would have rather your starting quarterback, Micah Brown, to been in the game to make a play for you. So Davidson has burned all their timeouts and one more knee, and that will pretty much do it 
from Murphy as they get the win. And player of the game will get that up for you. A career tech education player of the game, Breland Petey Manley, comes in and does a great job. And, Corey, if there was ever a demonstration or an example, an example of tale of two halves, I believe this game made it up here tonight. Yeah, I agree with you. You look at the Murphy Panthers now moving on to 38-20-1 all-time versus the Davidson Warriors. You look at the last region championship being 2008 by the Murphy Panthers. But, right. again, the Murphy Panthers trying to still make the playoffs Correct. for the first time since these young fellows were freshmen. And their head coach at that point in time was Rick Cawley. So, again, a bittersweet moment for Rick Cawley as he spent some 20 years at Murphy High School. So, again, congratulations to the Murphy Panthers finding a way to get it done in what we knew would be right. an outstanding game in 7A Region 1 with two equally balanced teams tonight. And as we uh, talked with Rico Jackson earlier this week, we told him, at this point, you still control your fate. Uh, losing this game would kind of put your fate on the shoulders of someone else. And he said, we don't want to do that. We know we're in control, and the kids know what's in front of them coming up this Friday night. Exactly. It boils down to those head-to-head -head matchups yeah. each and every week in 7A Region 1, and all regions are very critical as there's some great football games that were being played tonight. But the Murphy Panthers come and score 13 unanswered points here in the second half and come away with a huge 7A Region 1 victory. Yeah, that is huge. And also, don't forget, they have the tiebreaker over Fairhope, so whatever comes out of that Fairhope Foley ball game tonight. And Murphy still yet to uh, play Baker, which they're going to play next week. That's going to be a huge game for the Panthers. China Power providing our statistics to us. You're looking at Murphy, 164 rushing yards, meaning they had wow. 142 rushing yards in the second half alone. Right. Only 10 passing yards, 174 total yards of offense for the Murphy Panthers. And also that one turnover was early in the second quarter, which led to the seven points on the board for the Davidson Warriors. Davidson, on the other hand, had 122 rushing yards, 36 passing yards, 158 total yards. Both teams turned the football over once. You saw sure that did. late turnover by the Davidson Warriors on their last possession. And you look at the penalties, only five total penalties by both teams. Two by Murphy, three by Davidson, and it was a great football game played tonight it here really at was. Lad People Stadium. I return here to legendary Lad People Stadium. Let's take it down to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn has the winning coach. All right, I'm here with Coach Jackson and our career tech education player of the game, Manley, number 27. Congratulations on the win tonight. So what was it like getting this win and helping them accomplish this win tonight? Well, actually, we needed this win. This really – this win determined us if we're going to go to the playoffs or not. So coach told us we were going to run the ball down and throw it, and that's what we did. We were going to execute it. Yeah. So how do you feel about your team's performance tonight? Man, I'm just so proud of O-line, man, and I'm so proud of Breland Manley, man. And, uh, man, I'm just proud of the team. They fought. We were down, and they didn't stop fighting. And, uh, man, I'm just excited for them. So what kind of mindset, this is for both of y'all, did you have to stay in to accomplish this win as a player and as a coach? Uh, we just – have to play hard. We just got to keep executing down by down. We just have to keep on going. We got to get all the players in together on the same page. Uh, he took it out of my mouth. <laughs> we need to be a coach. <laughs> well, congratulations on the win and a region win at that. Yeah, thank you. All right, Kimberly, we appreciate that. Coach Rico Jackson, very happy, and our career tech education player, Bree Lamarley. Don't forget, next week we're going to Blunt. It's Spanish Fort versus Blunt, a 6A Region 1 battle, and we'll cover it for you for our next edition of the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. For Coralip Bounty, down on the sidelines, Kimberly Dunn, our statistician, China Powell, executive producer, Quentin Howard, and director, Wade Ford. I'm Al Whedon, thanking you for joining us. It was another great ball game tonight. Murphy gets the win for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Have a great one.